Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be reviewing the cardiac muscle action potential. A muscle action potential is an electrical impulse that travels along a muscle fiber's membrane, also called the sarcolemma. We learned in the previous podcast that the sinoatrial node, also called the SA node or pacemaker, located in the right atrium, initiates the action potential, which propagates through the heart's conduction system. Passing through both atria, then to the AV node, through the AV bundle, down the right and left bundle branches, and then up the walls of the ventricles through the Purkinje fibers. The action potential reaches the cardiac muscle fibers of the atria and the ventricles that are responsible for the contraction of the heart's chambers. These fibers are known as the contractile fibers. Let's now explore how the action potential occurs in a contractile fiber through its three phases, depolarization, the plateau phase, and the repolarization phase. The first phase is called depolarization. Contractile fibers have a stable resting membrane potential around negative 90 millivolts. When the action potential reaches a contractile fiber, its membrane becomes depolarized. That means its charge becomes more positive and increases to threshold level, which quickly opens its voltage-gated fast sodium ion channels, allowing sodium ion to soak into the fiber. Sodium ion concentration is higher in the interstitial fluid outside of the fiber, and the cytosol of the fiber has a more negative charge relative to the interstitial fluid. This helps draw in the positively charged sodium ions into the contractile fiber and produce a rapid depolarization that lasts for a few milliseconds until the fast sodium ion channels close. This stops the movement of sodium ions into the contractile fiber. The next stage of the cardiac muscle action potential is the plateau phase. In this phase, the positively charged depolarization state that began the action potential is continued and maintained for about a quarter of a second. Voltage-gated slow calcium ion channels open, allowing calcium ions to move into the fiber from the interstitial fluid. As calcium ions move into the fiber, The inflow of more positive charges triggers the opening of calcium ion channels in the SR membrane, which releases even more calcium ions into the cytosol. Remember the function of the muscle fiber SR, or the sarcoplasmic reticulum, is calcium ion storage. Muscle contraction occurs due to the high calcium ion concentration inside the muscle fiber. There are also voltage-gated potassium ion channels in the contractile fiber sarcolemma. Some of the potassium ion channels open as the plateau phase begins, kicking potassium ions out of the contractile fiber. This helps maintain the depolarized state with a membrane potential of around zero millivolts because the movement of calcium ions into the fiber balances the movement of potassium ions out of the fiber. The plateau phase in the cardiac muscle fiber action potential is a major difference from the skeletal muscle and neuron action potentials, because neither of those two cells have a plateau phase. Because of this absence, their depolarization phases are much faster lasting only one millisecond. Now let's review the last phase of the action potential, repolarization. 
the repolarization phase shown here in red on the diagram quickly reestablishes the negatively charged resting membrane potential of the contractile fiber. More voltage-gated potassium ion channels located in the sarcolemma membrane open, in addition to those that opened back in the plateau phase. This kicks more potassium out of the fiber. This loss of positive charge brings the membrane potential back down to a negative resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts. As the potassium channels open, the calcium channels close in both the sarcolemma and the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which also helps restore the charge to negative resting membrane potential. The actual contraction of cardiac muscle fibers is very similar to skeletal muscle contraction. When calcium ions are released into the sarcoplasm of the cardiac muscle fiber, calcium ions bind to troponin, which swivels tropomyosin, shown in brown, away from the myosin binding sites on actin. This exposes the binding sites to the myosin heads, which attach through cross bridges and begin the power stroke of muscle contraction, pulling the thin filaments on both sides of the sarcomere inwards toward the center. The transport of calcium ions through the slow calcium ion channels is regulated by various factors including hormones like epinephrine, which speeds up calcium ion movement into the sarcoplasm and increases the strength of the heart contraction. Like skeletal muscle, there is also a refractory period in cardiac muscle contraction where a second contraction cannot occur until the first one is completed and relaxation is taking place. This is ensured by the longer length of the cardiac muscle refractory period, which is actually longer than the contraction itself. Remember the contraction here in depolarization and plateau is shown in green. This long refractory period prevents the extended contraction of tetanus from occurring in cardiac muscle. Tetanus does occur in skeletal muscle because it has a shorter refractory period. The prevention of tetanus in cardiac muscle is critical in that it allows the heart's chambers to alternate between relaxation, the time when the chambers fill with blood, and contraction when blood is ejected out of the chambers.